Okay, what's the Bendini motor about? Well, the Bedini, succinctly this is, as possible. This is the, <laughs> the basic model Bedini motor. This is the, the learning motor, if you like. It's called the Simplified Schoolgirl. It was originally built by instruction from John Bedini by a 10 year old schoolgirl in America for a science project. And it recharged its own batteries. Now, this is a slightly modified version. It runs off, in this case, a 12 volt battery and it's charging another 12 volt battery which can be the same size or it can be bigger uh, it's not charging it fast but what it's charging it with is a different type of electricity which is completely cold, very little current and very big voltage spikes and that has the effect on this battery of enlarging and restoring it instead of making it smaller and decreasing its capacity so that's the basics of what this is doing at the same time, it's genuinely a motor, so it's turning this wheel. We're not doing anything with that at the moment, but you can take a load off this wheel and use it to move something, power something, move a fan, anything like that. And um, this is the current the machine is using. It's 200 milliamps currently at the moment, so not very much. As I say, it's not charging this battery fast. But if we do take a load off the motor, this is very unusual. If we weigh the motor down, I'll do that with my finger now, it actually draws less energy. So you can take a load off this motor without costing you any more on the running side. So it's a motor and it's a battery charger. So can you explain a bit about what's happening in the electronics or the electric side? Right, I can explain a bit. I've never heard a complete and thorough explanation, so you'll have to forgive the gaps. But um, the, I'll tell you what, I'll shut the, uh, stop the motor a second and you'll see what's going on. So underneath the motor is a coil and that's two winds done together all around a coil several hundred times. And around the wheel we've got these magnets, they're all north poles facing outwards. So what this battery is doing, this running battery, is charging and discharging this coil which is pushing each magnet past. So that's the triggering for the motor, that keeps the motor running. Every time the coil discharges there's a very large voltage spike that comes from it and that's sent to this battery. Um, it's it comes out, it's a, it's a kind of, I'm not sure if it's a completely, but it's at least a partially negative voltage spike. So this battery isn't charging the normal way round. If you follow the circuit, the positive on this battery is actually linked directly to the negative on that battery. So these batteries are in series with each other, they're not in parallel like they would be with a normal charger. So nothing about this is conventional. This is a transistor, a little bit of resistance, a um, couple of diodes and that's it, that's the circuit really. So it's, it's pretty simple. So who are you and where can people find out about this? Right, well my name's Tony Mills. Um, I've been playing with these things like this for about a year. Um, all of the information for these is free online. Um, you can build one of these from schematics and plans. It's all available free and there's support forums, which is also free. Uh, that's how I learned. Um, my friend Andrew, who's gone off to change a nappy, um, he also built it with me, so I, I've got to mention him. Um, I've, I've got a website which was primarily a photo portfolio. It's uh, www.tonymills.me.uk but I've put a big link on there which will send you to all the free plans um, and it's right at the top of the page it says radiant battery charging and rejuvenation um, that'll send you to all the free plans there's also a link on there to Renaissance Charge which is a company that John Bedini is involved with where you can buy a solid state box that will treat your batteries this way whether you've got solar panel panels or whether you've got mains um, so you can have a charger that rejuvenates your batteries all the time. They even do that for electric cars, 
So if you have an electric car, every time you charge it on a Bedini charger, you'll get a bigger range than you had before. So that's all on there. So how much would it cost to make this yourself? This one, you, you build it for about £50. Uh, the biggest expenses would be the wire and the magnets. Uh, some you'll get it, you know, if you've got a, something like Maplin's nearby you, some of it you'll get there. The magnets you probably have to order online, but they're not expensive. And they're not special high power magnets, they're just a little bit big, that's all. Um, and the website tells you all that? Yeah, um, well, you'll get more information. I'd point you to where the majority of the, the starting information is, all the schematics and so on. For sourcing the parts, have a look where you are locally, because... Um, you know, we're in the UK, people have got recommended dealers in every country, in every part of the country and, uh, you know, just have a little look online, see the magnet specs and see how cheap you can get them. The transistors, we ended up getting the bigger versions and we ordered a lot of 10 off a chap on eBay who does parts that are used in Bedini motors. So, you know, search around and you can get them at different prices. So who was, who was Bedini and where did he John get Bedini the John Bedini still is a man who lives in, uh, in Idaho and he's been playing with stuff like this for about 50 years, coming up to 50 years and he's, he was, he's a genius, I think, uh, I, I hope he won't mind me saying, he's never met me, but he's, he's a genius. Um, he acknowledges that the work he's doing was based on work that Tesla started a long time ago. Um, but Bedini has made sure that we know how to keep working this stuff. He's made the circuits available so that people understand the energy. Um, and he's concentrated on charging batteries with it. Because as Tesla was using the energy, all you could really do was light lights and make sparks. It was, it's not energy you could run a drill off or power a home with. But once you, it will also charge batteries extremely well. And once you've charged a battery, you can use that battery to power anything you want to. So Bedini's genius was to, is to make sure that we know how to use this to create usable power, which is batteries that keep on growing and become capable of more and more work. And what other applications might there be? Well, the motor side of it has got a lot of applications. Um, this is at the moment really not doing anything. I mean, we can turn it into a fan with a couple of bits of cardboard and that's then doing work. As I say, it doesn't cost us any more here. But um, other Bedini designs like the window motor, which is a similar principle, but it's more powerful. They've got a usable shaft power and you can start to do whatever you can think of with that. There's, you know, he's leaving the applications to us, but a chap in America has just recently dropped one of those into a small cruising boat and the, the motor propels the boat and it also charges a bank of batteries off the back of it at the same time. And, uh, you know, that's very exciting. That's an exciting development. And the heat? Uh, you could use it, well, in theory, you can use it for heating. Heating's going to be a big, big question. Um, if you can get enough torque off of something like the window motor, then in theory you can heat up a torque converter or you can run an alternator. And this could be a way that we could produce heat. You can use heat to run it by Peltier units, which we've seen running here. So you can you can uh, integrate it with other other methods of generation as well, and still get the radiant charge on your batteries. Um, of course, the the motor itself doesn't produce any heat. Um, it's one of its benefits; it produces no heat in the charging battery either. Um, so and it won't directly produce heat. Why does the radiant, why is it the radiant energy beneficial for a battery? It's, uh, one certain reason which is very conventional is it goes in in big pulses. So this machine's running off 12 volts but the pulses that, we're, that that battery's seeing are over 200 volts. Um, my meter runs out at that so all I know is it overloads 200 volts. But these machines should produce somewhere between 2 and 400 volt spikes so we know we're in the ballpark. Um, so those pulses will always help to break up the sulfur on a panel, the sulfate on, a, on batteries, lead panels. Um, the radiant energy, the cold, the cold nature of it, the fact there's no current going in, seems to encourage the battery's chemistry to change completely. And as the batteries get used to the chemistry, 
they can even start to grow crystalline lead on their panels. So that the, the battery becomes a completely different beast in a way. It's not got the same chemistry it left the factory with once it gets used to the radiant energy. Um, and because it's not put under stress, we're not forcing current into it. We're, we're not putting heat into it. So it's got nothing to react against. It just simply sucks the spikes in. And the heat is what normally destroys a battery. Um, and so people always will want to know, can you use one battery to charge the other and then the Swap other to charge over. it? Yeah. Uh, and no, not directly, you can't. Um, with this particular motor, um, for myself it's less clear cut on some of the other motors, so I'm, I'm not sure on that, but with this particular motor you've got to have a conventionally charged battery on the front. If you take the radiant battery, swap it over and recharge this one, and keep doing that, you'll run out of energy. So what you do is you conventionally charge this front battery, always. In this case we've got a little solar panel going in as well, uh, just so we get a good run time during the festival. Um, Having said that, this radiant battery will charge whatever you like. If you can run an inverter off it and a battery charger and charge this battery, that's perfectly fine to do. And this, you can have, I could have one battery this size and four the same size on there. And anything I can run off those four batteries, if I can charge this with it, I can do it. I can also use the mechanical on the wheel and extra coils to take a load off the wheel and charge a third battery here conventionally which will take over when this battery's done. So there's many ways you can use the energy off the wheel to furnish the energy where you need it. It can be mechanical, it can be electronic. Okay, brilliant. All right. Yeah, I've reached the extent of my understanding of a question. <laughs> no, that's brilliant.